Okay, we are live and our webinar is just starting. So to all of our attendees, welcome and welcome. I'm glad that you're able to join us on this wonderful afternoon. It's Friday afternoon. I can see that our participants are jumping in. I'm glad that you're able to come. Uh, we have a chat bar at the bottom, which will open up and you are more than welcome to, uh, to let us know where you're, you're coming from, what parish you attend. Um, if you want, you can change the chat from uh, chatting to the panelists. That's myself and Ed and, and Josh, and you can uh, chat to everybody in our call. So we're so glad that you have been able to make it here. Ed, how are you doing? Excellent. I, I hope I'm not muted. <laughs> no, I can hear you. Yeah, Perfect. I can hear you. Amidst all of this uh, COVID-19 stuff, I mean, our ministries have changed quite a bit and many, many ministries are learning how to get online. And so this is the first time that you and I are on a webinar together. And so, you know, to our attendees, we can ask for forgiveness in advance if we start to get a little bit off, off track with our technology. But so far it's been, so, it's been pretty good and, and we're so glad that we have the opportunity to continue the mission uh, from the comfort of our home. Ed, how many so webinars have you been on? Oh my gosh, my day is full of Zoom Zoom calls. So probably, I think this is about the fifth today. Okay. So I, I become quite the Zoomer. <laughs> That's amazing. Mary Elise, I can see that you've sent a note. Welcome, I'm glad that you're here. And to all of our participants, welcome to our, our webinar on Taking Alpha Online. Uh, I want to introduce you to another member of our team, Josh Canning. He is our uh, Proclaims digital community manager. He's online. Uh, you won't see him, uh, but he's going to be chatting away and uh, throwing out some of the sound bites, some of the links that Ed's going to be sharing. And, and if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please feel free to throw them in the chat box or in the Q&A box. And if he can answer it right away, he's going to do that. But if, uh, if he feels that it's, or if we feel it'd be a, a better conversation, we're going to bring it online as well into our webinar. Okay. So, uh, why don't we begin first with a prayer, and I'd love to lead us in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day, for the gift of faith, and for your Son, Jesus, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And today on this webinar, we ask that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us and um, give us inspiration to continue in the mission of proclaiming Jesus to the world. We pray for all of those who are directly affected by COVID-19. We pray for our leaders in government and in our church. We pray for healthcare workers who are serving our communities, who are serving those who are sick. Father, we know that you care for us and that you are still with us amidst this moment in history. And so Holy Spirit, be with us, allow us to continue on in the mission of sharing Jesus with others. And in his most holy name, we pray, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So I am here with Ed Zadix, Director for Alpha in the Catholic Context in Canada. I think that's the full title. And uh, before I hand over the mic to his, um, for his presentation, I know he has a ton of wisdom and, and a lot of great things to share. I want to take an opportunity to share a little bit about Proclaim, uh, what Proclaim is and why uh, we decided and chose to share a series of webinars with you. Now Proclaim is a movement of the Archdiocese of Vancouver launched in October 2019 as a response to Pope Francis' invitation to the whole church to observe an extraordinary month of mission. It is a movement inspired by the Holy Spirit to inspire disciples to share Jesus with others. Now, I want to share a paragraph from Evangelii Gaudium that provides a founding tenet to Proclaim's mission. <clears throat> in it, in paragraph 27, Pope Francis says, I dream of a missionary option, that is, a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything. So that the church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures can be suitably challenged, channeled for the evangelization of today's world rather than for, for self-preservation. 
While Proclaim was launched to inspire a missionary impulse, we have seen COVID-19 become the impulse that has changed everything. This pandemic has, has affected schools, families, economy, travel. Really, there isn't a part of life that hasn't been affected by COVID-19. All of our parishes have closed their doors, public masses have been canceled, and ministry events and programs have been paused or postponed. Now, while COVID-19 pre 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 presents challenges for parishes sacramentally, financially, and in ministry, I think Pope Francis offers another way to look at these challenges. If we continue on in Evangelii Gaudium, he goes on to say, the parish is not an outdated institution. Precisely because it possesses great flexibility, it can assume quite different contours depending on the openness and missionary activity of the pastor and the community. While certainly not the only institution which evangelizes, if the parish proves capable of self-renewal and constant adaptivity, it continues to be the church living in the midst of the homes of her sons and daughters and does not become a useless structure out of touch with people or a self-absorbed group made up of a, of a chosen few. It is a community of communities, a sanctuary where the thirsty come to drink in the midst of their journey and a center of constant missionary outreach. So the challenge presented to us here is not one of self-preservation due to closures and social distancing, but one of missionary creativity, self-renewal, and constant adaptivity. We are invited to live in the domestic church, in our homes, and to be missionary outposts to serve our wider community. So our parishes might be closed, but the church never stops. Now, with this missionary creativity in mind, Proclaim has offering a series of webinars designed to help you on mission. They are, in a sense, a response to many questions and challenges that have been raised in the last few years. So this is the fifth webinar in our series, and we are so blessed to have Ed Zadix from Alpha joining with us. Ed is also a parishioner at Christ Redeemer Parish in West Vancouver. Ed, how are you doing? Doing very well. Excited to work with you again, Eric. Yeah, Ed and I did a, did a number of trainings with Proclaim over the last few months and earlier in the year, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, time and a privilege to work alongside you, Ed. You have so much wisdom to offer. Your zeal is second to none. You have so much energy. I'm so amazed and inspired by all of what you're doing, both in your parish and across Canada. So I'm going to turn off my mic, Ed, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, right before I do, I'm just going to send a, uh, just let our attendees know that, it, again, you are more than welcome to throw uh, comments, suggestions, questions into the chat bar and the Q&A bar at the bottom. And um, we are going to make sure that we leave enough time at the end of our webinar to try to answer as many questions as we can. So I'm going to mute my mic, Ed, and I'm going to turn it over to you. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and Eric, you turned over sharing to me as well, I assume. Perfect. Okay, so should I do that? I'll wait a little bit. Okay, so welcome everybody. I recognize a lot of the people on the line. So I am just so happy to be with you. I see I've got friends from Our Lady of Assumption, Christ the Redeemer, amongst other parishes. So today, um, we're going to do two key things. We're going to dive in to a new page alpha online and we're also going to go deeper into alpha builder which is now called my alpha but i i want to share some stories uh, but before i do i want to tell you something about how the world has changed we used to talk about best practices at alpha and virtually the whole world is upside down and has built and, and has been renewed so we now talk about good practices practices that actually have been just developed and implemented in the last few weeks and I'm gonna share some of those things with you. I have to apologize as well. Um, and one thing, as you're leading your courses, we always need to remind our participants that you know, we depend on technology. So we might glitch, uh, I might, you know, there might be buffering. So just bear with us and bear with us as you run the same in your own 
in your own parishes as you run Alpha. Um, what else can I tell you? We're in uncharted territory. So think back to four weeks ago when the world seemed relatively normal. And from four weeks ago to today, we're isolated, um, we're at home, uh, we're you know living with social distancing. The whole world seems upside down, but I'll speak to Eric uh, in a second, or not in a second, but Eric and I talk about just the renewal, the things that we're seeing in the Catholic Church today is remarkable. I'll give you one little story. So I was able not only to see Bishop Barron's Mass last Sunday, but I was also able to go to St. Anthony of Padua. And I've been there the last couple of weeks, and I've, I've watched how, you know, streams of people have started to come to those Masses. And I just feel there's a prompting of the Holy Spirit calling us to renew the Church even more than ever. Um, when all this happened at Alpha, we're a ministry, we started to reach out to course administrators or pastors, really with the primary goal of just checking in. You know, just, Father, how are you doing? Course administrators that had run Alpha in the past, not really talking about Alpha at all, but really just being there to support them in their time of need. And what we found happening is they were the ones telling us that they were going to turn their Alphas online. So there's so many examples I can give you across Canada where parishes that ran an alpha have chosen to move it online on their own and more are now seeing the fruits of this and wanting to start another alpha <coughs> just after Easter in the imminent future. I'm just going to give you some practical examples. So, you know, for me, I think the Holy Spirit is using this opportunity. He didn't create this, but he's allowed it to happen and something beautiful and magnificent is happening in the Catholic Church. We're connecting in different ways. Alphas are starting up at home, in small groups. So I just really wanna applaud you for what you're about to embark on and I encourage you really just, just have fun with this. Just, just lean into it and learn. We're all learning on the fly. You know, four weeks ago, none of us were talking about online alpha. Um, in those prayer calls, uh, before I really dive in, I want to share three really short stories. Right within our archdiocese, the school teachers at St. Anthony's Elementary, halfway through their alpha, quickly flipped over to an online alpha, and apparently it's working fantastically. Um, I have calls all across the country. I was with three parishes online yesterday in different parts of Canada that have all turned their alphas online. And the feeling I'm getting and what they're telling me is just do it. You know, just our guests are yearning for it. They're looking for connection with people. Just just start, just get going is what they're saying when you ask them for a tip. And the second story I want to share with you is from St. Mary's in Ottawa. I just spoke to them this morning and it's an elderly parish. I was quite surprised when I was on the Zoom call with them, but they were able to convert 24 of 25 of their regular guests from their in-person alpha to their online alpha. And they said the two quickest people to respond to jump on to their online alpha were the two oldest people in the group. It was phenomenal. So just remarkable. And the last thing I just want to encourage you, I know Our Lady of Assumptions on the line, St. Matthew's is running this week. I just, I just want to let you know that we're praying with you, we're standing beside you, but many parishes are turning from in-person alphas to online, online alphas. So don't get hung up on, I don't have all the answers, I want it to be perfect. Just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and just start. Um, you're going to find that, you know, it's going to work out. Okay, perfect time for me to share <coughs> a link. I'm going to talk about two primary tools today. One is the new online uh, homepage where you can get a lot of resources. So I'm just going to share my screen. I'm going to share the computer sound. I'm going to optimize the screen sharing. I'm going to share that. Bear with me. And let me dive into something. So at some point, Josh is going to send you this URL to all the attendees on the phone, but I'm in now Alpha Canada online. And this is a new page that just um, formed in the last week or so. I would say for all of you on the line that are considering moving your Alpha online, this is going to be a key resource for you. It walks about, uh, it walks through, you know, the new environment, 
There's a little introductory note from Nikki Gumbel that I'm going to share with you all in a second. It's two minutes long. It talks about your format and solutions, talks about um, Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Skype. The recommended solution today is actually Zoom. I'll explain that in a little, in a, in a, in a little bit later. Decide on the format, whether you have a large group and you want to have a central leader that plays the film and then pushes people into breakouts or whether you want the breakouts to happen individually with breakout leaders um, is an option. The Alpha Weekend Away is just changed. Um, the principles haven't changed, just the methods have. So we're moving online. We've already had some parishes move their weekends online. And prayer ministry, it's still happening the same. It can happen in, in Zoom breakout rooms. It just looks a little bit differently. Um, there's a session on this home site that lets you really see practically how it can unlock for you. And we're gonna play that in a second, but I just wanna review the page. What a host needs to do, um, what hospitality looks like, and some things that are, some new things that have just developed. You know, we're finding that the most effective duration for these alphas are about an hour to an hour and minutes total. So that creates new opportunities for us. People that thought perhaps I don't have the time can now fit it in. It's less taxing on volunteers as well. And resources, online resources available, not only this portal, but instructions on how to use Zoom, tutorials, and some more information that's coming next week that I'll walk you through. So let's start, let's, let's watch a two minute clip from Nikki on his own alpha in London. Hi, I'm Nikki Gumbel, and if, like me, you're involved in an alpha course and you're thinking, what are we going to do now with COVID-19? There is a way forward, and that is to go online. That's what we're doing. We're doing it tomorrow night. We will be meeting with our small group because we're, we're not through the course yet. So, in fact, it's, week, it's the week on telling others tomorrow night what's going to happen at 7.45, all of our small group are going to be watching that video from the Alpha Film series and then they'll just have time for a, a cup of coffee, a get, grab a cup of coffee and then at 8.15 we're going on to a Zoom call. So from 8.15 to 9.15 we will be in that small group. And it's so interesting, the response, Stephen Foster sent it out. Within an hour, he leads our small group, within an hour, seven out of those people had responded. And we're hoping that all of the small group actually will be able to come. And some of the ones who wouldn't be able to come may be able to come. One is in, I don't know whether he's in Wales or Los Angeles now. He's going between the two, he's an actor. But we're hoping that he'll be able to join wherever he is in the world. So this could be actually an advantage. We may have a higher turnout tomorrow night than we've been able to have any other week when there've always been people traveling somewhere. So don't give up running Alpha. This is a great opportunity to do it in a different format. If you're halfway through the course, you can finish the course like that. And also, next term, what an opportunity to do, for Alpha to go much wider. This is not a moment to retreat. This is a moment to advance. Alpha can be run digitally. It can, small groups can be, be on Zoom. And I think we should see more people doing Alpha than ever. People have, will have much time on their hands. If they're locked down in their homes, why not? come and do an Alpha course and use the time to explore the most important questions that we could ever ask and have a lot of fun Perfect. at the same time and meet okay, a whole group of so people and do it in a different way. This. this is a great opportunity. Keep going. God bless. Down. So I briefly touched on what are we seeing happening in terms of solutions? There's lots of choices for people to connect. Uh, Google Hangouts is one, Skype is another one, but the one that seems to work the most is Zoom. Um, it has a lot of functionality. It's easy to navigate. I played around with it last week. It's pretty easy for me to invite people as well as um, assign breakout rooms. So let's, let's just uh, look at format for a second. So there's a lot of things we're seeing right now. People are now taking the opportunity to run alphas in homes. Um, they're inviting friends, neighbors, etc. So if you've got a small group of say 10 people in your alpha, you send out invitations, people show up, um, 
and you don't really need more than one breakout room. So whoever the course leader is can share the films and then run the breakout um, right within that one session. But if there's a large group, Zoom also has the ability, if you say have uh, 100 people at your alpha, to have the films playing uh, from the MC or the leader of alpha. And that host then has the ability to uh, push out breakout rooms in whatever size. So let's assume it's 100. Um, that uh, course leader can send out 10 groups of 10 and one leader can facilitate the small table discussion. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the weekends are still happening the same. The recommended format is that it might be a little bit shorter, but we play through the three videos in a similar format. And then make sure that you add fun elements. Uh, the other thing in terms of prayer ministry as well, the breakout rooms on Zoom, Zoom give you the ability to schedule prayer ministry within private breakout rooms or creatively what we're seeing is some people are having the rooms available and people come into the room as a set period of time. So something to consider um, as you're embarking on this. In terms of discussion, and we're going we're gonna to break for another video in a second, it's important that all the guests be on video. Why? We want to have that personal touch. We want to see the guests. We want to have intimacy. We also though, want them to be in a quiet environment. So we generally ask them to mute for the talks, but unmute during the discussion. So a really great practical video on this page um, is this one. It's just um, about six minutes long. And it really will give you a really good sense of how you would embark on running an online alpha. Hi, my name is John Wentz, and I'm here to walk you through how you can host Alpha online using Zoom. We'll talk about three things. Number one, how do you prepare for an Alpha online? Secondly, how do you share the video on Zoom? And third, how do you facilitate discussion using Zoom, whether you have a group less than 12 or more than 12? Let's get started. <coughs> So when we talk about hosting Alpha Online, let's think about the physical environment that you're actually going to be in. One, I always like to try to find as quiet of an environment as possible, and I always like to try to eliminate as many visual distractions behind me while I'm present. So if you're in a messy room, maybe move to a spot that's going to eliminate those distractions. Second, you're going to want to have all of your resources available for your Alpha Online, just like you would on any session of Alpha. You can go to alphausa.org, log into My Alpha, make sure to have the video for that session downloaded and ready to go. I also like to have all of the discussion questions from the guest guide, and you can just copy and paste those questions out of the discussion guide. Uh, into a Word document and have that ready to go so that later on when it's time to have discussion you can paste those into the chat window for whoever's having discussion. The third thing that I like to ensure in setting up for an Alpha Online is to make sure that I have a great internet connection. So do whatever it takes to make sure that you've got a great internet connection. If that means plugging directly into your computer so that you have a direct line, do it do whatever it takes to make sure that you've got a really strong internet connection, the best one that you can possibly have. Once everything is set up and guests begin to arrive into your Zoom meeting, you'll wanna make sure to encourage them to unmute whenever it comes time to talk and to enable their video if they're at a place where they can do so. It's always helpful whenever we host an alpha online that we have multiple people helping. So if I'm hosting the room, I love to have a co-host or two who can help make sure to do all the behind scenes of muting people or unmuting people. It's always very helpful to equip a team, even when you're doing alpha online. As all the guests arrive and you're making light conversation, once you feel like you have enough people there and it's time to begin, you can begin with an icebreaker question. Simply put that icebreaker question in the chat window, let everyone know what it is, and have some fun going around, getting to know each other, and making everyone feel welcome. 
Once your icebreaker comes to a close, it will be time to share the alpha video. And we're gonna walk you through those steps on how to do so. Sharing the alpha video is really simple. At the very bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see a button that says share screen. Simply click on that and then a new window will pop up. Select your alpha video. And before you click share, make sure to click the two buttons at the very bottom that say share computer audio and optimize for full screen. Once you've done that, then you can click share and everyone will be able to see the window that you've selected. Simply start the video and get an acknowledgement from the people in the group that they can hear the audio. And once everything is good, make sure to mute all participants so that everyone can watch the video without audio distraction. Once the alpha video is complete, simply click stop share, and then it's time for discussion. If you've got a group of less than 12 people, you'll wanna keep everyone together so that you can continue to have your discussion. However, if you are migrating your alpha from in-person to online, and you wanna keep the continuity of your original small groups, then you can click and utilize the function called breakout rooms. Breakout rooms allow you the ability to assign people to a smaller discussion room where they can then carry on their alpha discussion. This is great if you want to keep the consistency of your already existing small groups because you can manually assign people to those rooms. For your discussion time, it's always helpful to remember uh, when, when you pose a question, maybe type that question into the chat window or copy and paste if you have put those into a document ahead of time. If you are monitoring the entire alpha and you're utilizing breakout rooms, you'll want to make sure to end your alpha on time, but also be sensitive to the fact that several of those breakout rooms may be in the middle of their discussion. You can give them a broadcast message to let them know that there are three or four minutes left remaining in the discussion time so that they have an opportunity to bring their discussion to a natural close. Nobody likes to be cut off in the middle of a sentence and have an online meeting pulled out from under them. So give them ample opportunity to bring their discussion to a close. And then as you click on breakout rooms, you can watch as people leave those rooms and know when it's an appropriate time to bring the alpha to a close. So those are our three tips on how to prepare for alpha, how to share the alpha talk, and how to accommodate people for the discussion groups. We hope you find this helpful and we are here, we're praying for you and we're very excited to see how Alpha can continue with okay, this so online let me just option. Back out a couple steps. I'm in here. Let me come back to the page. Okay, so as I said, first key resource I suggest you all get familiar with, it's quite simple, is just this homepage for alphacanada.org. Uh, slash alpha online and I think Josh Canning will share it with all of you we might email it out to you the second thing I want to dive into is um, is how you actually set your alpha up or you maneuver my alpha so let's assume you're about to run an alpha uh, Mary Elise uh, somewhere down the road either at home or in your community go to the bottom of the same page I'm ready to run alpha so it's waiting, depending on my collection, connection. Okay, now this is my dashboard. Just realize if you've never registered an alpha before, <coughs> you'll have to sign in. It'll just ask you a couple basic questions about um, uh, how uh, you wanna be communicated with on email. You just sign in with a password, and then what will open up is the same screen. So I'm now into the second key resource I wanna talk about today, which is um, formerly titled Alpha Builder, but which is now titled My Alpha. So these are all the alphas that I'm involved in right now. I can also see new materials. I can see any upcoming alphas as well. Alpha at Moss's house is active, Alpha at Sue and Marcel's place, Alpha at Ed's place. I'm gonna show you now how to actually start your first alpha and i'd strongly encourage in fact um, you want to make sure that you register all your alphas why do you do that it gives you a whole 
encyclopedia, a treasure trove of assets, and I'm going to go through some of that information right now. So, and I'm going to show you how you would actually um, start a new alpha. So you can create an alpha here. You also have the ability to start it um, at an earlier window, but let's just create an alpha right here. Okay, the first prompting will be, who is your alpha for? Anyone? How would you like to give the talks? We don't want to do live necessarily. Let's do video. That's the normal way. Catholic, English. And from here, you can pull down several languages, different languages should you want to, but let's go with English. Uh, we're going to run this series, the film series. I'm going to type in alpha at ads. We're going to use the film series, the start date. So let's say we're going to start a couple of weeks after Easter. 6.30 p.m. What's the street address? Let's assume we'll put in my home address. Oops, I'm not in Saskatoon, but let's assume I'm in Saskatoon. What's the church I'm attached to? Christ the, Re Christ the Redeemer, West Vancouver. You can make a change to that, but that's the parish I'm, at, um, I'm involved in. My contact information. <coughs> And do I want to publish that alpha so people can join it uh, by searching for an alpha and come to your alpha? In this case, I won't publish it, but if I want to publish it, I just check it or not, and then I create an alpha. So at that point, it tells you when your training sessions should run, essential small groups prayer ministry, when all the sessions should be. As you know, you could reorder those sessions as well. But I just want to go into some of those new resources that are available. <clears throat> so on the far left of the screen, you can see my dashboard, my alphas, preview resources, learning centers, and search. Let's just take a look at learning center. So if you've never run an alpha before, there's a wealth of information. Alpha 101, uh, the seven best practices of Alpha, we had talked about things like, you know, the importance of prayer. It's the first and foremost principle, um, evangelization, hospitality, small groups. And we've just added running Alpha online. So let me just open that up. So there's six articles and one video. The video is the one we just looked at. I'm just going to open it for a second. Same video we just looked at, five minutes, 59 seconds. Should you want a reminder of how that um, works? I'm just going to back up the screen. So modules on how to run it online, an article, tips for using Zoom, uh, the different team roles for an online alpha, running alpha in a youth context, and then icebreaker for online alphas. OK, let me just move back to my dashboard and my alphas. And I want to now show you upcoming alpha. Let's take a look at some of the materials that are available. So we can look at the series materials, but we can also show you some of the materials to promote your alpha. So invitation cards, um, a small card that you can text, email, or post, different images, alpha online, invitation cards, and then if promoting to church, different videos I can use, promoting to guests. Again, invitation cards, what is alpha, videos. And I'm just going to share with you a short clip so you can see some of the resources available. Where are they? Where are they moving through? Try alpha, 20 second video. Okay, let me just back out of the screen. Okay, learning center. 
Alpha 101, Seven Best Practices, Ministry on Alpha, Student Led Alpha, Running Alpha in other contexts, and of course, uh, running online. Okay, so now that was the two key resources. Number one, Alpha Online, and then moving into My Alpha. Just want to now wrap up. Um, because I think we're approaching the end of our time. I want to show you two other key resources um, that I want to point you to. So under Alpha Online, the first option you've got is to sign up for upcoming webinars. And there's actually four over the next couple of weeks. So Alpha webinars, we've got starting on April 8th. We've got one at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We've got one at 6 p.m. Pacific time. We've got another set <coughs> April 16th at 9 a.m. Pacific time and one at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And you can register. Each of those are one hour sessions with Jason and Ben with the newest information that we've got to really help and support you go online. So I'd strongly encourage you to take a look at either those and register there. And again, let me just show you where you can do that. And I think Josh, probably a perfect time to post that as well on um, the chat box. And I wanna leave you with the last, um, the last bit of information, which is, I have to find my email and let me move through here, is we wanna invite you to a session on Monday as well with Nikki Gumbel and Father James Mallon. So I think Josh is going to post that as well. Um, some of you might have already received that email today, but it's a webinar that's at 8 a.m. Monday morning titled Alpha and Evangelization During Difficult Times. So that's as much time as I had to share content. So probably a perfect time for me to back out and let Eric and Josh help us manage any questions you've got in the chat. Thanks very much, Ed. Appreciate the walkthrough. I'll get you to stop uh, sharing your screen and we'll pop up our video. Perfect. Okay, fantastic. So we have a few of our guests that I know have started Alpha face-to-face -face in, the, in the traditional way and have now moved to uh, you know, to, to working out the online alpha. So some of the questions they might have might be around transitioning, yeah. uh, you know, from, from traditional to online. There are others that I know have thought of new opportunities where you know, they, they might have had some family members or friends or those who are in what Proclaim is called the proximate periphery, those who are close to us but far from deep now. Geographically, we're, we're, you know, we're open to now reaching out to those that might be in other countries. So <clears throat> there could be a lot of different questions that can come from a variety of contexts. So I'm going to invite our participants to throw out any questions that you might have around either transitioning from traditional alpha to online alpha, or perhaps, you know, taking alpha into the home through Zoom or online. But I have a couple of questions for you, Ed, if, if sure. you would mind helping um, helping move the conversation. Uh, when it comes to table hosts uh, versus small groups, is there you know, any tips on perhaps breakout room size versus the table, uh, the table, ho uh, table sizes? Well, you know, back to that um, concept, principles don't change, but methods might. I think we have to be adaptable. So the SAS, the teachers at St. Anthony's have one large breakout of, I think, between about 15 teachers in a session. Um, but the recommended um, group to get intimacy is probably in online would be under, I'd say, 12. So probably okay. one host and about 12. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking a little bit smaller than, than the, uh, the recommended sizes. Okay. Yeah. That's great. <clears throat> um, I've heard others try to run alpha um, with their core team first, mm -hmm. uh, sort of as a dry run. So uh, for those who might you know, be wanting to try to experience the online you know, uh, alpha uh, process, what are some kind of best tips to offer to teams that are you know, going to try and do a dry run in advance? Well, 
You know, I, I think I think it's a great idea to do at least a dry one in terms of technology. So let me give you a couple options. So when St. Benedict in Halifax converted, they invited their guests to a walkthrough. Uh, and I saw Father Justin do the same thing at his first mass. He described what was going to happen. Uh, he told people how it was going to unfold. He told them it's based on new technology. Be, you know, just be cognizant. It might not be perfect, but it'll get better over time. And then there was a chat at the end. So what I'd say is, is people are going to be friendly and uh, we're inviting our friends into Alpha, people that we know. So don't worry about it. I think the key thing is just get on with it um, is the first thing. Practice it for sure. Practice it, but be transparent with guests. And I think they'll have a lot of uh, sympathy or empathy or love for us when we're transparent. Did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Ed, earlier you said um, that you want to encourage us to just do it. Yeah. Uh, get online and and get going. Um, when it comes to planning, and I'm you know I'm speaking to some of our our you know hardcore planners when it comes to putting on events. You know we want to try to make it as perfect as possible. Um, in going online, this is a brand new set of tools that we're working with. You know, could you speak to, you know, I guess hearing that encouragement to just do it, uh, you know, tied to that sort of tension in us that says we need to figure this out? Well, I mean, I think human nature is we want to do things right, but I think we have to balance it against this need, this movement. And, and you know, Eric, you and I have talked about and Josh, I saw Josh pipe in on the chat as well. I think there's a movement of the Holy Spirit. I mean, this time is a remarkable time. People are wondering what's happening in the world. So I think there's yearning to connect. Um, people are either feeling really isolated or they're cramped at home with a whole bunch of people and they're kind of lost. So, you know, people have a great heart just for conversation. And I think Alpha, I think this would be such a great opportunity just to invite people into a conversation don't get hung up in how it works i mentioned carrie newhoff's uh daily webinar or daily podcast that i see and i think he purposely creates errors in it because it looks more real and friendly so i think people just want to connect i think this is such a great opportunity i, I don't think we should hang up on things i think easter is such a perfect time to run it and from a personal perspective it dawned on me, I could run an alpha for the neighborhood. I can put a flyer in homes around and say, do you want to just connect? We want to invite you to this thing. Just check out the first session. Um, it's easier than ever, actually. We think about this as more complicated, but the truth is to run alpha today in home, it's easier than ever. We don't need a big team. <laughs> Food can happen in a different way. Invitation could be over email. Um, and I'm hearing people are starting them quicker, they're less resource and volunteer intensive, and people are sharing their hearts sooner than ever. Mm -hmm. That's why we're recommending that the conversations or whole alpha is only an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. People are actually bearing their souls quicker. So I, I just think all signs that the Holy Spirit is working, we just should do it and just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple of webinars. One of the webinars that I did recently was with Amber Zolt on how to lead Alpha, uh, pardon me, not Alpha, but Discovery Study, and she said the exact same thing. The small groups that are launching are launching faster, and that there are um, an increase or perhaps a, a, a quickening of, of personal sharing. So that's, yeah. Yeah, I, I, can, I can validate that. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, Eric, let me share another thing that I've heard too. So think about it. We've got, and we have no idea when school is gonna return. Um, I've heard of families across Canada running alphas at home daily. So they're running a session. They're running it for their family. So just take that to the next step. People can run an alpha now. We can actually break the rules but still retain the principles. We can now run an alpha in five weeks, not over 11 necessarily. You can actually set up sessions that connect with people on Tuesdays and Thursdays over six weeks. So... You know, people are yearning to fill the void of isolation. I think that this lets them do it. Two other things I'm going to share with you, because I know we've only got about 10 or 12 more minutes to go. Um, in terms of food, we always talk about the key principles of Alpha being food, film, and then the discussion. 
how people are getting around the food. Let me share with you. I heard an alpha across Canada, uh, one from the East Coast. And when I asked the question about food, they said, oh, you know what we do? When we start our alpha, and it's an alpha about 20, we start and the MC is very playful, says, okay, everybody come back in five minutes with your favorite snack or leftover. And so people come back and then the MC starts to share and ask questions. So what did you bring? And that's why we want to know who the participants are. Eric, what did you bring? What are you eating? Hold it up, Eric. Show us what you're eating. Somebody else will bring up a dessert. Oh, and so it just, it just creates this new level of intimacy. That's one thing. Um, the second thing, these conversations are going really deep. We're still adding fun. So not only we can handle food, but in a different way. And the beauty of ALF is all about that relationship. I'm hearing people integrate things like icebreakers. <coughs> a funny icebreaker I heard from Ontario was um, the MC asked all the guests, put a timer on for one minute, asked all the participants to come back with their cleanest white sock. So you can just kind of imagine what happens. So everybody comes back and somebody's holding a white sock and a nice sock and a dirty sock, and it creates a whole conversation, a new new level of openness. So I think what's beautiful about this, it just lets us do food, the film, and the small table discussion in a different way with less resources. So, I mean, I'd highly encourage everybody just just try it, just have fun with it. And if you need help, of course, you know, reach out to Eric, reach out to me, and we're, you know, we, we just love to help. That's really neat. Yeah, I, I, had, um, I had a call with someone who uh, never thought that they would put an iPad uh, down at their dinner table with another family that they wanted to have dinner with. And they said the conversation was great and, and the you know, process, you know, worked out really smoothly. So there are ways in which we can still, you know, quote unquote, share a meal. I think the other thing that I've heard that's been really neat, Ed, and, and you might have some other thoughts on it, is uh, taking the hospitality online could look like uh, you know, what Josh has been able to do for us here at the chat bar. So yeah. you could have digital ushers. And I've seen that even with yeah. some live streaming of masses where people come on to watch and there are a team, there's a digital team that's coming on and saying, welcome to, welcome to our parish live stream mass. Yeah. And yeah. please let us know where you're from. So there are ways in which we can still continue to offer hospitality. So we do still have a few minutes, Ed. So yeah. I'm going to throw it back to our guests, our attendees. If there's any additional questions you want to throw out, you can use the Q&A or you can use the chat bar. But please feel free to throw out any questions. They can be technical questions. They can be programmatic. Uh, they can be general questions on, on Alpha Online. Uh, whatever you feel you want to throw out, please let us know. Um, Here's another question that I've been thinking about a little bit. Um, how, how do you train, or perhaps what are some additional tips to train table hosts, or what mm. you might call now breakout room hosts? Yeah, I think, I think Eric, the principles um, remain the same. So I'd encourage you, if you're on this call, still go back into my alpha, register your course because it unlocks all your materials watch the videos you know many of you on the line i know know that there's i think it's a 25 minute alpha essentials there's a 30 minute session on small groups there's i believe a 30 minute uh, training on prayer ministry and then within the videos under best practices there's a number i think there's eight shorter videos why eight for seven best practices because there's an introductory video but they also go through the training they also go through the training with new and additional tips so the key thing i would say <coughs> is the principles remain the same people need to engage so we always talk about table hosts are listening hosts they're not presenting the content presents their role is really to create intimacy. So things like that, uh, the icebreaker with the sock, uh, the little thing with go and bring back your favorite leftover or snack and show us what you have. And also adding the personal elements as well, Eric. So if you know there's 10 people in the chat, let's assume it's you, Eric, and it's Josh Canning, and it's, you know, it's Mary Elise, and it's uh, you know Jen, you, know, you personally go through and ask them how they're doing. That's why you wanna view the participants um, you want to ask and engage with them and we're just finding intimacy happens quicker so again the principles stay the same the methods are slightly different but what we're seeing is just 
more intimacy, more amazing things. So to your, the short answer is go back and do the training. I think the training materials are so good in alpha, um, both um, within training center, but also the longer training, uh, the longer training videos as well. So it's all still there. We still want to use them, but those would be the tips. Okay. Okay. I see Josh has thrown out a question um, on Alpha's marriage course. And yeah. it actually got me thinking about <clears throat> some of how uh, the training encouraged couples to get broken up into different tables to allow for um, individual sharing and, and different stages <coughs> and personal you know, personalities to come through in the tables. So do you want to, uh, does Alpha have any thoughts? Uh, do you have any thoughts on marriage course and also on, you know, couples who might be watching um, and participating in Alpha from the same window, from the same Zoom account? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the marriage course is wonderful. It was filmed here and Josh, Josh knows it very well. So it is a great resource. But the other resource I would point people to is the Life Shared series as well. Um, some of you have seen it, you've heard me talk about it, but there are three sessions um, of about 50 minutes long with key voices across Canada, and they really invite us to talk about faith. So I think the marriage course is wonderful for couples, but so is the Alpha course, like the Alpha course. And I'd also invite people to consider the Alpha Youth film series as well. So the marriage course is wonderful, Life Shared is wonderful, and the Alpha Youth Film Series is wonderful. I happened to be, I think it was in Windsor, Ontario, and I was invited to come to an Alpha. And it was an older parish, so was a, I was a little bit surprised. I came into the room, and they were actually running the Alpha Youth Film Series. And I was a little bit surprised, but I had never viewed and been in a whole session, and it was really good. The difference between the Youth Series and the Film Series is that the Youth Series runs over less weeks. Um, the, the sessions have regular breaks for what I call popcorn discussion, as opposed to in the traditional alpha, the discussion happens at the end. So lots of resources, but back to your point about couples, this is a great time for couples to reconnect and families to reconnect. And alpha is such a soft and gentle tool. So I think the film series works as well and the marriage course does as well, but I, I think couples are wonderful in the same room. I think it works as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Alpha and home, I think, sounds like a great idea, yeah. considering uh, the opportunity that you have, you know, over a meal, then to share a video and have a, a conversation. And what I love about the videos is that uh, it can spark conversation. So for parents, and I'm a parent of young kids, sometimes I have a hard time thinking about how I'm going to spark, you know, a conversation around faith. And uh, the videos could certainly be a, a way of doing that. Yeah. And Eric, you know, I mean, you've been really involved in um, Alpha, and I think most of the people on the line have been. <clears throat> the nice thing about Alpha, it starts so gently in the beginning. You know, that first talk is, is there more to life than this? You know, the question, one of the questions at the end is, um, why did you come here? You know, like, who invited you here? Which prompts a whole dialogue, and it goes deeper from the first week to the second, who is Jesus? Why did Jesus die? And it progressively gets deeper as prayer is also introduced all the way through to healing. So it just, it just works because it's so gentle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you, this, this is a, uh, I think, a very parish specific yeah. question. Um, some of our parishes uh, have, well, I think a lot of our parishes have a variety of different ways of communicating to their parishioners. And a lot of the times the announcement uh, or the invitation to Alpha comes on at Sunday Mass. Mm -hmm. And so now Sunday Mass is not, uh, it's not a gathered event. It's not something where we can make an announcement. And so for parishes that might be wondering, how could we reach out to um, more people? You know, do you have any tips on, on, on making invitations there? That's a, that's a great question. I mean, we know that, um, two things happen. The first thing is most parishes that start with Alpha, so I'll think of our own parish, and there's some people from Christ the Redeemer on the line today. You know, we started in 2012. We started with great support from Monsignor Greg. He was wonderful. Um, we had a great team in place. Some of them are on the call today. And who came to those first Alphas were parishioners. But what happens over time, the real parishes that evangelize, and I know Our Lady of Assumptions online, 
the parishes that really see the fruits of Alpha are the ones that quickly invite people outside the church. They quickly invite friends and family. So that leads me to the second point. We know that 80% or more people come to Alpha from a personal invitation. So this is such a great time to reach out to neighbors, friends. Hey, um, you know, as simple as, um, I know you're not busy because you're not going to work and we're not allowed to go to soccer or hockey right now. Hey, I'm going to run this thing called Alpha. Why don't you just check out the first night? And in fact, it's so easy to just say, why don't you just come and check it out? We're doing this thing. Uh, whenever we've run it, it's great. Just come to the first night and check it out. You're going to see it's a lot of fun. So you're inviting people to one event in a real easy way. So I didn't really answer your question, what do we do now in this world? I mean, I think Proclaim's done such a wonderful job of, you know, pushing out evangelizing tools. I think that's one resource. So personal invitation is one. Reaching out to neighbors would be the second thing. And third would be use the tools within Alpha to send out invitations. So I just touched on it, but there's probably 20 different little things that could be sent out on digital media, um, on text, uh, through Facebook, Instagram, or email. And there's little clips that are as short as 15 seconds long on the who will you invite video. Uh, but sometimes, Eric, all it takes is a phone call. Hey, Absolutely. I'm trying this thing. You know what? I'm just trying around it. So bear with me. We might not have the technology. I just want you to watch the film with us. Just come to this discussion. It might be really good. And I want your feedback on it. Yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. What about a parish that, um, you know, well, for a parish who's considering running Alpha, uh, do they do it as one big group Alpha? <coughs> or do they... Uh, or is it better to invite individuals who could host a table, just host an alpha, you know, yeah. like a whole bunch of small alphas with one leader? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's a perfect answer, but you know, of course, because you're one of the key archi architects of Proclaim and, you know, like helping us all with it. I just think this is a great time to do something different. There's so many fruits to having an alpha in home. And we know people, and I don't want to mention their names, but we know many people out of John Paul II are running small groups with friends and family. It's a perfect time. And, you know, you can run an alpha with five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 different people. And as I said, I'm, I'm contemplating, can we run it in the neighborhood? Can we then invite some friends? So I think this is the most perfect time to start an in-home alpha. Secondly, in terms of a parish, it's great. You just need, it just needs to look a little bit more organized. And when I was at St. Anthony of Padua's Mass last Sunday, um, Father Justin has announcements at the end and he allows time. So he can actually encourage his congregation to invite. And you're going to hear a story. We're going to, it was going to be released in the fall, but Father Justin's alpha that started in January, he normally averages, or I think, pardon me, their last alpha had about 98 people on it. Um, he launched a prayer initiative to invite the parishioners to create a list, like an impact list, to invite 10 friends or family to Alpha. Um, they took their Alpha from about 98 to 140. They over exceeded their available capacity. So perfect time to run in home, but I think there's a way that a parish can launch it. So let me just talk about Christ Redeemer for a second. We're advocates of Flocknote. We can invite through Flocknote. We can form a larger Alpha, or we can also at the same time run smaller alphas as well. So I don't want to go on, but I could. Thank you. Wonderful. Ed, I think this is uh, the moment for us to wrap up and, and, and close off. We've got um, our, we're, we're at the hour and I just want to thank you for all of what you are doing, not only here in our archdiocese, but across Canada. You've given us a number of resources that we can use now to take as tools to share with uh, our ministry leaders and others who, uh, who are going to help us in leading Alpha and taking it online. And for those of you who are considering Alpha in the home, we would also love to help you out there as well. Uh, as I said at the top of our webinar, Pope Francis and Evangelii Gaudium invited us to a missionary creativity and to be ready to be adaptable. So uh, every day our world might be changing in different ways. We're getting announcements from government and schools and, and everything else. And, and so I think as missionary disciples, we're invited into that constant adaptivity. Um, following this webinar, 
I'm going to take our recording and, and put it online if there's anything that you might have missed or would like to refer to. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to send out those links again uh, with Josh that Josh put in our chat and that Ed had shared on the trainings. And if you'd like even more information, Alpha is hosting a number of webinars in the, num in, in the coming weeks uh, to help us get online. So I want to thank you all for joining us for the time that you've taken. And I want to encourage you in the mission. And, and hopefully, uh, this has been helpful for you. And, and if you do need any additional help, we're here to help. We are ready to, uh, we are ready to serve you. So thank you very much. Please be safe. Please be healthy. And God Thanks, bless Eric. all of Thanks, you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, thank you everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.